Okay, I am recording. Um, welcome everybody to tonight's um, session of Indie Filmmaker Chats. Tonight I am sitting with um, my home girl, Lori Nelson Lee. Uh, I'm planning or striving to sit down and do these chats uh, every week uh, with a different filmmaker, independent filmmaker, uh, to discuss their background, what they're working on, their future, their thoughts on film, and uh, blacks in film, so on and so forth. Whatever you know, whatever uh, comes to mind that we decide to talk um, about. Uh, so again, tonight I'm talking with Lori Nelson Lee, who is uh, a filmmaker, uh, writer, director, producer, author. Uh, she's on movies and videos and um, Pro, um, publishing company and, and so many other things. Uh, so uh, we'll sit tonight and talk some films and uh, other stuff. How you doing tonight, Lori? I'm doing great. Listening to you at that intro, now I've realized why I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> that was too much stuff. <laughs> it's a lot. When I started, you know, I was taking my notes of what questions I would go over. I was like, man, she got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you keep busy. They say that's good. Yep. This but, good. you know, I, I, like I said, let's just listen to you. <laughs> and I know why I'm tired. <laughs> okay, so Lori and I met, I'm trying to think how many years ago oh it was. Oh, gosh. Oh. I, I, don't, I don't remember how many years. I know where. Yeah. How long ago that was. What year was that? Whatever year it was, it was the last... Like 2007, uh, maybe? I think so. It may have been six. Six? Something. It was the last six, time six, ABF Fest was in California. That's right. American Black Film Festival. The last um, year it was there. We met there, but I knew her... Um, now husband at Howard University and I'd known him for years and Lori and I were in a um, was that TV writing it was a TV writing class at the um, the Writers Guild yeah okay so I heard from her uh, husband Tracy uh, that she was an author and what the title of her book was and she was speaking I don't know if you even know this she was speaking to someone who was maybe a few chairs down from me and passed them her card and I was being nosy <laughs> and I saw the card with the picture of the book which made me say hey I know you, you. <laughs> I know and you and the funny thing is we were at Howard at the same time at the same time and did not I know, guess this know. is how it be. So yeah, we've known each other a long time. Um, broke into uh, film together. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit further into the conversation. But I'll let you start with your background, a little bit about yourself. Wow. Okay. So um, I started with the the children's books. I was a, a an author, and I um, had a children's book. My first book that I had just published actually i don't even think it was out yet when when you and i um met it was we you know we had the artwork together and that's why i was on the business card but it hadn't actually been printed yet mm. oh so, yeah so um so you've really been there since the beginning <laughs> but um yeah it start, i started off writing for children and i was at that writers guild that tv um, writers guild class because i wanted at the time i, I wanted to write television for, for kids like a, a nickelodeon or you know, um, Disney Channel type stuff. So um, a friend of mine sent me an email about, what was it, 24 hours before the deadline for that Writers Guild um, uh, thing. Because didn't we have to send something in to, to get into that class? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> oh no, that was a different class. That was yeah, that was something that else. Was the, that was the other one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that same that same weekend at the ABFF, I was also in a Nickelodeon fellowship um, uh, lab program, and we had to. And so some that's how I found out about the Writers Guild one because they sent me an email for the Nickelodeon one first, and I was like, well, I don't know anything about writing for television. <laughs> Why would you send this to me? 
So, um, but I was intrigued, especially since it was Nickelodeon. And I said, you know, I was writing for kids and everything. So I researched, I had like maybe 24 hours. I had to, I didn't even know what a spec script was. <laughs> I, had to, I had to find out what a spec script was, research how you even write, um, you know, television screenplays. Um, tel- and, and then I had to figure out what show I was going to write it on. And then sit down and start writing. And start writing. So, you know, I did, I did all of that. No, it was a little more than 24. I think I had three days. I'm sorry, I had three days. And so I did all of that in that time frame. I barely made the deadline. It had to be in by midnight uh, that Friday or whatever. And we were, Tracy and I were driving around D.C. trying to find out what FedEx place was, <laughs> you know, because we were at, it was like 1150, you know, and that when I walked in there and, and finally got it off. So I ended up getting accepted into that program. And that's kind of what started it all. It was, you know, we went in that program, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, this is so, this is so much fun. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. And then we get in there and it's a group, you know, a group, a group thing. So it's like the, all of the finalists that made it were in this room with these Nickelodeon executives and, you know, where everybody's smiling and we're, you know, getting into <laughs> ourselves, each other. And all of a sudden the door closes, the execs walk in and they just start one by one, completely picking up, picking up <laughs> those scripts. I mean, just picking them up off just one at a time it became to the point where she's red pen like, right, right, the red. <laughs> and you start off sitting up and then after a while you're just kind of like <laughs> slow down like please don't, don't come over here <laughs> so um it was still it was an awesome experience because um for most of us we had never been in a situation like that never been that close to execs didn't know what they were um looking for but there was something about our scripts that um made them interested enough in inviting us as finalists to this program. Right. So that's what kicked it, kicked it off for me. And um, after that, I don't remember how soon after that, but I found out about OBS and, the, um, organization organization mm-hmm. and joined that. And uh, there was a, a, one of the mentors there, Tracy Grant, was, happened to be there that time. It was at on Howard's campus. And he, they had this, this, uh, comp, this, this, I, I guess it was, I don't know what they, I guess it was an example that they were trying to do. You, do you remember they were like, you know, you no longer have 10 pages to keep people's attention. Uh, right. um, does anybody yeah. have a script here? We can test it out and see if, um, I, I can't remember if they were doing five pages at that time or if they were just doing three, but you had like a limited amount of pages to, to try to That's get their attention, attention. Right. Yeah. And see if they were interested. And I just happened to have brought a, a script for a short that I had written um, with me. And they had five people come up and read for it. And Tracy Grant just decided that he, he liked it enough that he wanted to invest in it. And I was like, wow, somebody wants to get <laughs> money <laughs> to actually produce this script. And um, from that point on, you know, after we shot it and you were there on set mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. Shot it, and I got to see my words come to life and it was a whole different type of excitement. And, you know, I was really excited when I first saw my first book come off of the press. Yeah. That was one level of excitement. This was a whole nother, another level, level of excitement, just watching um, your words so let's back up a bit. <laughs> let's back up a bit about um writing children's books mm-hmm. so at howard you weren't an english major right no i was an international business major with a marketing concentration okay so how does that then move into writing books for kids so um, well, let, let me back up even a little bit more if you want to go into that. Uh, where did the, the desire to write even start? So all of that came from my mother. My mother was um, very much into English literature, writing, reading, all of that kind of, you know, that whole category. And um, I guess it brushed off on me because as a kid, I used to do a lot of writing, but I would keep it to myself. I'll write, you know, poems and little 
what I didn't know at the time, but now I know were like little short stories and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I kept journals, diaries, like most girls do, <laughs> but mine were, they were so animated. <laughs> Even to this day, when I go back and, and read them, I'm like, yeah, I should probably turn this into something. This is, this is a, it makes me laugh even to today. But um, it definitely came from my, mother, from my mother, and she wanted to write a book. And she kept talking about writing a book, and, but she needed somebody to kind of push her and, mm -hmm. and do it. So mm -hmm. she uh, found out about some competition, and I don't remember what it was. I think it was with the Reader's Digest or something about writing. And in order to encourage her to do it, I said, well, why don't we tag team? Um, you write a chapter, I write a chapter, you write a chapter, I write a chapter. And so we did that. And um, when we finished, it was uh, a good idea. It was way too long to be, you know, a children's book because Writer's Digest was dealing with like short stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I took a piece of it and I was like, I think I want to work with this. And she said, if you think you can turn this into a children's book, then go for it. So that became um, Hillary's big business adventure, um, for what I took from the, that experience with my mom. And so since I did that, it motivated her to finally write her first children's book. And she wrote, um, I can do it myself. So within about a year's time, she and I both had, um, it was a little less than a year. Because I think I put mine out in January and then hers came out in August of the same year. So um, we were at that point authors. <laughs> So, so that, was a, that whole process was a lot of fun. Let's see, we got a question from someone. So if you could repeat the name of the books, and uh, we know there are kids' books, but who are they geared toward? I guess um, age group yeah. or content? Mm -hmm. So Hillary's Big Business Adventure, um, it was, I did that one before I was married, so it was under the name Lori Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, it is, they, they make you categorize it. I, I don't like to put age brackets on my books because children learn to read at different ages, different levels. Right. So, but industry has it set from the four to eight um, age group. And then the I Can Do It Myself is by Valerie Nelson. That's my, my mom. And um, hers is for preschoolers. In both of the books, and, and there's a couple other books that we also sell on, on our website, but all of our children's books you can find on nelsonpublishingbooks.com. Okay. Thanks okay. for asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then you're writing, you an author, you have a children's book, and then from there, there's a bug to write TV. So, right. So, but at this point, I'm still thinking writing. I'm still thinking, okay, I'm just a writer. I'm just going to write. Um, it was the, it, it was the OBS competition, like I said, with Tracy Grant, that kind of gave me the confidence to, um, to kind of try my hand at directing and producing for the mm -hmm. first time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe the following year, uh, ABFF again, um, had a competition it was, uh, I think it was called the Be Real competition or something to that effect. But basically, you had to do a 90-second um, short on a topic that, would, that they gave you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that 90-second short. And I didn't win the, the main competition, which was the, um, the ABFF one. But, but the, uh, the sponsor who was... Hmm. Oh, Austin, remember. Austin, yeah, it was Austin Austin. Insurance. They decided to hold um, a, a, their own competition online, and um, I won the online competition. And so, I uh, my short was then optioned by the Root, and they sent me a check. I was like, <laughs> Am I getting paid for this? This is awesome. <laughs> So, so after that, I was like, okay, what's next? Right, 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 right. So something you said um, made me pause and think because you said, you know, you were just writing. When I'm asking, how does it go from, uh, you know, what you were writing as a kid to children's books to TV to film? I think um, for me and industry folks that I've met, it's been um, pick one. You can't do it all. 
But in what you're saying and how you did it, it, it would seem like that that would be the encouragement from people who are in, in the industry. I, Find out where you fit best, yeah. write a little bit of everything and, and see, see what works. That, that is exactly right. I've been told that more than once, not just the fact that I dip in different, um, different parts of the industry as far as books, TV and film, but also um, the genre. So, you know, one day I might feel like doing something that's comedy the next day I, I might feel like doing um drama and i've been told you should really just pick one um i, I would like to just pick one honestly <laughs> oh, goodness. but my i guess my brain just doesn't work that way it's like whatever story pops in um is is the one that i end up working on at, at the time I, I will say i'm still trying to um, perfect a strong comedy it's like my comedies always end up being dramedies <laughs> <laughs> so based on that I probably am, am more to, geared towards the the drama um when I'm not writing for children mm -hmm. but um yeah I don't I, if it were up to me I would just pick one but yeah my brain just doesn't function that way yeah yeah <laughs> I think uh starting out then that that's uh that's the way to go to just to just write Mm -hmm. Just do your research like you did and uh, just pick something and just write. That's what I say. That's what so, I do. Uh, <laughs> your thoughts on um, when you first started filmmaking, what was it like for you? Um, did you think it was easier than I, you had hoped or was it harder than you hoped? Um, I was super nervous, like the first time on my on my own set, mm -hmm. um, super nervous because I felt like, okay, so by trade, I'm a project manager. I'm an IT project manager. So uh, being a production manager is not that much different than being a project manager. You have, mm -hmm. you, you're basically in charge of this whole thing and you have to direct all these people, which is fine when I'm in my element, but this right. was all new to me. So I was like, oh my gosh, I got to show up and actually look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have already recruited all of these people and they need guidance. Like they need to be told what to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, so I was terrified. I was, I was really scared. But I must say, once, you, once I got there and everything was moving so fast and yeah. you don't really have time to be nervous anymore, yeah. um, it was easy for me to shed the, the nervousness. The nerves. But, um, it doesn't change like I don't it doesn't get any I don't get any less nervous with each project and I you know Tracy tells me that's that's a good thing that you mm -hmm. know that, that even you know to this day sometimes he has nervousness get, you know getting on stage and that's supposed to be good energy mm -hmm. but um I don't know sometimes I'm just like it was am I ever just like not gonna be nervous <laughs> but um for writing it's 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 a little nervous because it's not just you, you know, you have right. other people that depend on you. You have actors that want to be able to use this as um, experience real. Right. You know, because right. you can't pay them all the time. Right. You, know? you right. have um, production people that you have put money out for and you can't afford to be going overtime. Yes. You know, things like that. So, um, you, you know, it, it turns out that after the project is over, Mm -hmm. I always think, okay, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> right, right, in, right. In the thick of it, it's like, oh my gosh, I won. <laughs> you know, so, but you know me. What's my nickname? Spazzy. <laughs> With jazz hands. Ah! <laughs> Let's see, we have another couple of questions. So we were talking about the fear of being on set, the nervousness. Um, can you pick out what, um, the scariest part might have been in filming? The scariest part for me, um, again, because we are very independent. We're not like one of those independents where we really have like a hundred grand behind right, us. Right, right. The projects we do are like three to six thousand dollars, you know? And so I can't afford to really to mess up and have to do a lot of reshooting. Right. Um, so my biggest fear is, and we also don't have monitors a lot of times on set. You know that. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to actually see it in the scene. And so my biggest fear is that once I get all of my footage together and I get back to the editing room, 
that I'm missing something that I yeah. can't go back and get. Yeah. So for the beginners, when she said we don't have monitors, th those are the jazzy little monitors that uh, go on top of the video camera and, you know, you can watch what the scene is going to look like as you're filming. Um, so yeah, we were just looking. Correct. <laughs> uh, let's see another question. During your first projects, did you find that the actors were open and ready and willing? Yes, very much so. Uh, I had one, so here's my one bad experience. On the set of Unraveled, we had a, um, a small part that was supposed to be played, um, the, it was the detective actually. Mm -hmm. And the person that we had, had uh, cast to do the detective never showed up on set. <laughs> The day of and the day of, like we are on set, ready to shoot, and yes. there is no actor, and he's not picking up his phone or anything. There's, you know, not really a plan B because it was really just a, a small subset of the crew. Um, mm -hmm. We were shooting on location that day outside, gorilla style, gorilla style, mm -hmm. and no mm -hmm. actor. So. <laughs> My trusty boy, yes. <laughs> my, one of my besties, um, who actually was, um, I think Stefan was performing as, I think he was like my, either my assistant, my AD, or yes. one of my, so I, I knew that he had done some acting before. I was like, you need to like go home <laughs> real quick and then come back on set and, and learn these lines in like two seconds. And he, and we, and that's exactly what we did. We shot, we shot the AD that day for yeah. the detective part. So, I completely um, forgot he had to run. You remember him. that? I completely forgot that that happened. But other than that, every every set that um, that I've been on, whether it was one of my projects or one of your projects, because um, we work together, all, we work mm -hmm. together every time. Mm -hmm. um, I found that the actors are very, very much into what we're doing and um, very cooperative. They come prepared, mm -hmm. uh, they're very professional, uh, which makes it so much, it makes it so much easier. Do you have any thoughts on why that might be? Or why they're so cooperative? Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm thinking they're just like us. They're just trying to get on like us. And, and, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's a combination of they get something out of it. It may not be a check, but again, they're trying to build their resume, trying, you know, trying to build their reel just like we are. Mm -hmm. I also would like to think that it's because they really believe in and enjoy the, the project itself. Yes. And, um, and want to, and want to do well. So yes. I, I, I mean, I, I can't really speak for them. I'm just blessed that the people that come out are good people. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't talk about this at all. Um, well, I guess indirectly we did, but um, did you attend film school? Oh, no, no. And I, I was, it really hurt me in the, in the beginning. Like I felt like I was doing myself a disjustice by not uh, maybe attempting to go back to school. Like, uh, unfortunately, when I was in school, I had no idea that this was going to be a passion of mine. And um so when I decided that this was something that I wanted to be serious about, I come from, uh, I come from that place where you then must go and get educated. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think I was my own worst enemy with that thought process. And I, and I tried, I, uh, you know, I applied for, for, I applied for schools, but then it was the whole, okay, well, can I really, I'm a full, full on adult now. I got right mortgage and you know right. like can I really afford to go back to school um full time and let's you know without putting my age out there <laughs> the, tuition, the tuition of what it was when we were in school compared to what it very is very different today, now yeah very okay. different mm -hmm. so um you know then when that didn't work out when I couldn't get that to work the next thing that I tried to do was I applied for the DGA program the Directors Guild of America program you know the program that they had mm -hmm. um, in New York and it's like a four phase process and I made it through the first three phases of it it's like tests and interviews and it's, you know, all this stuff. And I made it all the way to the board when you go and you meet with like the entire board and I didn't get in. 
So I, I know I must have cried about that for I don't know how long I was, I was so hurt, but um, it all worked out because I ended up getting married like the following year. <laughs> and so it was kind of like, um, I can't go on. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's yeah, so you know, life changed. And, um, but the experience again was still a really great experience. And um, after that, I just decided, you know, my best form of education at this point um, for my life, especially now, I have, you know, have a, a child now, a two-year-old, so mm-hmm. or about to be two. Mm-hmm. And, um, the best situation for me is just to keep um, self-educating, um, pro- doing projects. I will say the, the best advice I was given, some, somebody who went to film school told me, you know, you're already ahead of everybody that I know that went to film school. Most of us, when we graduate, we're lucky if we have one one or two projects and you've already worked on how many. So when they put it to me in that respect, I was like, well, you know, I guess the hands-on experience sometimes is the uh, a better way to go than sitting in a bathroom. Yeah, but, um, that. I'm not to say that that negates the fact that I do do research and and read, right. um, you know, so. and workshops and, and workshops, lots of workshops. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, feeding off of others in our mm-hmm. same situation. I love learning from other indies. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you do this? <laughs> yes. So you're we're both in the D.C. area. What is uh, what are your thoughts on the film scene in uh, D.C. compared to like in Atlanta, New York or L.A.? Um, I mean, compared to those, those are pretty I mean, they, they have pretty big numbers. Um, mm-hmm. We, I think, do the be- we, we do well for what we have. You know, mm-hmm. it's not a it's not a, a city that's kind of built around that. So right. um, like, you know, maybe. In, in New York or LA or whatever that you might be able to find locations a little bit better because people, yeah. people are used to being um, asked if you can shoot and play, you know, around here, you go into a restaurant or something and ask it. <laughs> They're like, what? They're like, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want to do what? What is this for? Uh, so um, it's a lot. It's, I think it might, it's a, it's a bit more challenging, but um it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> if this is what you want to do, then it does not matter where you are. You're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, film festivals. We met at um, a film festival. We've been to a couple other uh, festivals together. What's your opinion on film festivals for newbies or seasoned uh, folks? Do you do you think that they're, they serve a purpose or... What are, what are your thoughts? I think I definitely think they serve a purpose. I think that that purpose is probably different for each person. I know when I first started out, I actually looked for the film festivals to basically validate me as a filmmaker. Mm. Um, that was so not the right way to go. So if that's what you're doing, I say stop. Yeah. Um, the best thing that comes out of those film festivals. For, to, in my opinion, are the, is the networking, the people that you meet, um, the the uh, connections that you can make, so that when you you know when there's other people and we we understand, hey, everybody's on a limited budget. You shoot, right. I can direct, or you, I can produce, or I, you know, it's that exchange that um, that you get out of it that I think means the most to me at this point now. Yeah, um, I'm. It's too stressful and you do yourself a disservice by looking for these, any of these film festivals to validate anything that you're doing. Yeah. And, or, I, and you know, and I have to, I have to admit my, my husband was probably the person who taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> he for sure was the person who taught me that. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I was in the same boat as you just thinking, man, if I could just get into this festival, that's all I need is, my movie is on that screen, then I'm going to take off. Mm-hmm. But you're right. It's, it's really more about who you're meeting there. And uh, your own lane, your own, your own journey. Your own yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of those kids, they went to film school. You know, yeah. they have a lot of um, networks and connections of their own that, that are of a different caliber. Yeah, 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 caliber. Right, so, right. Um, so, yeah, you, have to, you just have to build your own confidence and, and understand that it's a learning process. Yeah. 
Let's see, we have another question about um, film artists in DC. Do uh, you find that they're open to helping, advising, or collaborating on projects? Um, th that who's collaborating? The uh, let's see, do you find uh, other film artists? So I'm assuming artists, it's just everybody, director, editors, actors, all that. Are they open? Um, collaboration. To helping, yeah, yeah, helping, advising. Um, that one's a, a tricky one for me because I, I believe the answer is yes, but at the same time, uh, I, I have my own, I have my own like group of yeah. uh, people yeah. that, and we constantly work with each other over and we, we understand how we work. We know how we work, you know, yeah. uh, what, what role we play in each other's yeah. projects. So it's not that, um, that it's not that there isn't a, 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 a level of, greater collaboration that could happen mm -hmm. i think that for me anyway i get i just i've gotten comfortable with the with the group of people that we do work with yeah and, um that's i guess that's the best I, that i can answer that that question yeah. I, I think it's there yeah i probably don't take advantage of it as much as i should yeah uh let's see uh and then on to another question Okay, is the internet now a true, viable, and lucrative option for indies to make it, or has Hollywood and big business such as Netflix and YouTube now cornered that market too? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, I do think that the internet it has is made being an independent filmmaker viable. Um, it really comes down to how much marketing you can do it's all about mm -hmm. awareness the internet the internet is so huge there's so much going on so much content oh yeah so much content your biggest uh your busy, bi biggest obstacle is going to be getting just getting seen mm -hmm. you know um because once you get enough people to see you then you may not have the you know a problem getting netflix to right you know put your stuff on it's like you can say i have this many views or you know, we've sold this many cop, you know, at a dollar a piece or three dollars a piece, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. like whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have numbers that you can show people, um, they're probably willing to listen. Yeah. So that speaks to whatever you're doing, if it's the highest quality that it can be, then you know. Well, we say that okay. because we, we like to think we, <laughs> we like to we think the same way. We know, but trust I have been on Netflix. <laughs> And I have seen some stuff that not necessarily had the level of quality that oh. I had. So it but, did um, come down to the marketing, mm -hmm. which your which your marketing train looks like. It, it's because it, so, so so the flip side of what I just finished saying about you know getting getting recognized. The other flip side of that is also about who you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> So it is about who you know sometimes, not so much about, yeah, about what you're doing. I can vouch for that too. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for that too. Uh, your thoughts on um, being an independent filmmaker and wearing all the different hats. What's that like for you? Well, I, I don't have anything else to compare it to for as long as I've been doing this. I've been doing it independently. Mm. Um, it means that I can do things the way I want to do them. Yeah. Um, it means that I can do them when I want to do them. Mm -hmm. um, I can involve the people that I want to involve. So I don't really have anything to compare to. So it's great for me. I mean, I would like to get to a point where it pays for itself. Yeah. But, um, and, and that's the way that we're going. But in, in this, it's, a, it's whatever pace that I'm meant to do it at is where is how I'll do it. But um, I can't say that I'm not satisfied with, I like being an indie. I think the, the indie community is, uh, is special. Yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> but I could be, I could be biased. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of hats, you, uh, written, directed, produced, you've done, uh, short films, you, um, uh, music videos. Uh, would you say that uh, music videos um, was similar to the process for film? 
more fast paced, more slower, less work, more work? It's different. It's, it's n- n- not, but one's not, um, it's just different for me anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think the hardest part that I, that I have with that is like, <laughs> When I'm working on on the music videos, Tracy t- has told me more than once, this is not a short film. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a short film. But see, in my mind, I'm like, but it's still a story. It's, it's to us, it's yes. It's a story. <laughs> like, but to him, he's like, look, the music's got to bounce. It's got to, this, this has to happen, that has to happen. A, so it's a, when we work together, it truly is a collaboration because I have to understand that this is not my project. This is, mm. yes, he is the artist. This is his project. Yes, I had an idea. I gave him a treatment, and therefore he allowed me to use <laughs> him as a guinea pig. But you no, know, at the end of the day, it's it's coming out of his side of the budget yeah. um, of from Left Entertainment, and and it's and he's the artist. So it, it's just really different um, because when you're done, you you have a, a video that's about three minutes. Right, you know, long, and the editing process—that's that's really where it's different. You know, when you're editing for film, you you have uh, what I like to say, like longer, like longer chunks that mm-hmm. you can tell your story in. Yeah. And with the music, it's got it's got a bang on some kind of beat or rhythm that mm. sometimes he's got. He, he was like, "Don't you hear that? You hear the beat." <laughs> So anyone that has been in the editing room with us when we're working on music videos, it probably has a story or two to tell. <laughs> and I was going to leave it at that. Oh boy. I'm, I'm not going to touch that one. I'm not going to touch it. So, um, but, but, but what it did is... Say, it, we didn't say, but Lori's husband is Tracy Lee, who is an, an independent artist. Um, uh, you don't speak to it at all? Independent? Well, um, he's... It, uh, He's a former Universal recording artist um, who's now independent, and um, we do everything under our company, Left Entertainment, um, Left with two L's, so that's L-L-E-F-T-E-N-T.com is our website, Um, and so we work together. Everything that we do touches both of us, Um, so his his thing is, if it's music... (laughs) You got to, I you got, got it. To now. Right, right. I can see them. I can see them saying that for sure. So I have to I have to sit down when it's when it's when it's music and, and take my direction as if I was hired, you know, by to, anyone you know, else. Exactly. Yeah, by anyone else. Mm-hmm. So of all the hats in indie filmmaking, do you have a favorite? I do. I like producing. I do. I, I love to produce out of all the those things. Um and I, again, I think it comes from the fact that my background by trade is project management. So it's just easy for me to, to sit in that seat. Okay. But um, yeah, that would be my favorite. So your headspace is just already like a super organized headspace and that's easy to get that going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we're talking about uh, different hats. Um, how do you juggle all the hats? Because it's uh, you're still uh, a book publisher, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, still a book publisher and, and still writing books. Yes, I just I put out an, another book last year. Right. Last August, I think it was. Uh, and then uh, film. And then I assume uh, there's still some tinkering with TV scripts. So, Yes. Yes and 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 no. So I was doing so last year when I was um, home on maternity leave. I was really trying to get into the t- my TV side. Mm-hmm. And, um, but si- that since going back to to work, it's been a, a little bit harder for me to stay focused doing uh, the television. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so what happened is for a while, I just kind of was too tired. I mean, I was tr- getting used to being a new mom too. Right. So. Right. And going back to work, it was like I'd been home I, for, for a whole year. I had to do nothing but be a mom. Right. <laughs> so then it was like, now I got to go back to work. So um, I kind of fell back 
And it was really, you know, my friends that, you know, Maurice that you, that you mm-hmm. are, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, Stefan, that's probably on your list to, to, to coming up. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those guys, they would constantly call me and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> do something. What are we going to do? Stefan was constantly sending me stuff like work. Like we, like, you, I got something I want you to look at. I got something like, I don't have the energy <laughs> to do right now. So um, I think once I finally found my rhythm, in mm-hmm. you know mom work creative um i was able to get back into some things and so maurice and i have been working together on um we did a, a we co-wrote a short last year called the vows mm-hmm. and they're they're shooting that in chicago and um we are at the beginning um stages of trying to get back into a project that we started uh very early this year um called the way love goes i think that's the title and that's going to be a web series mm-hmm. so that's kind of getting back into the tv right kind of right. you know right and um and then right now he and i are working on a um a project for a network down in atlanta that a, a spec script that we're hoping that he's he's basically going to go down to atlanta and um i guess shop it around or something okay. mm-hmm. so he's got a meeting set up so you know we're we're he, they're getting me you know they're getting <laughs> <on there. laughs> slowly but surely i'm getting back in there and so what that did is that caused me to go back into my vault of scripts and start doing some rewrites and so now i have a a short or two that I would, that I'm, I'm in the very, very early process of trying to organize to maybe shoot next year. Okay. So you would say the, the juggling is uh, having a, some type of support system for oh. every piece you're juggling. Oh my gosh. Definitely definitely. Helps. Yeah. Definitely uh, yeah. Th- with the juggling, you know, support from my husband, support from, from our parents, support from, from our, our, creative friends, you know, other people that are, that, that understand and know what, how it is. And okay. It's been a while since I've heard from her. She needs a call. <laughs> mm-hmm. I might go mm-hmm. the, the, the nudger. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. and that's what keeps you going. Mm-hmm. That's what keeps me going. Yeah. Okay. What are your thoughts or, uh, views of, um, blacks in film? Um, or music, because you could, you probably have an opinion on music as well. Music, TV, film. I think that too often, I think that there's a lot more content out there than gets recognized. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that what I like is that I'm, I have seen a major increase of people going, you know what, forget mainstream. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's just yeah. do this. Let's figure this yeah. out and let's do this. And I, I love that because that's motivation for me. Definitely. Um, inspiration, you know, Definitely. to see other people do stuff. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like everything else that's, I don't, for me, I don't really like to be labeled a black film, film mm-hmm. r- filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I just want to be a filmmaker who happens to, to, <laughs> to recruit and hire right. people of color. Right. Um, and mainly because if we don't, who's gonna? Yeah. So, but you know, unfortunately, there's no way around that. You're brown, so you're going to be a, fil- a black filmmaker. Right. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I'm okay with that. That's, yeah. If that's what you, if that's how you see me, that doesn't mean I have to see myself that way. I right. call myself an indie filmmaker, right. not a black indie filmmaker. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. You spoke a little bit about what you're working on right now with Maurice. Um, did did you speak on what you may be working on individually? I don't remember. Well, I, the, I have a, a two shorts that I'm that I'm doing rewrites for that right. I'm thinking I might start shooting next right. year, but yeah. um, not too much information on them. Just just I mean, it's right. really the beginning stages. I just started um, pulling them out of the what I call the vault. <laughs> Mm-hmm. He's doing um, rewrites on them. So, and then it's really going to come down to time and budget as far as whether one gets done or two or, right, you know, whatever. 
what what does the future further than what you're you know you have going on with Maurice and your edits? What what does the future hold? Do you do you see yourself um, uh, writing a uh, filming a feature? Do you see yourself strictly doing one thing? You know, if you if you had your choice and could set a path, where would you say this this is definitely where I'm going? Uh, I don't really see me picking one thing I, again I just don't operate that way it's you know this month I happen to be really into my books this month Ooh. I happen to be really into you know my film this mm -hmm. month I really want to find an artist and shoot a music video like it's 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 it, that's just how I operate so I, <laughs> I don't see myself picking one I, what I would like to do is I have I'm sitting on two or three features I've mm -hmm. never in every in every project I've ever been a part of, whether it was mine or somebody else's, has always been a short. Yeah. I would really like to um, first get on a get on a set of somebody somebody's feature and see how they operate, see how yeah. it's different from possibly different from doing a short. Yeah. And then I would, and then I, I really have I really would like to um, produce this one of the features that I have, which is um, a, a script that. Uh, that I wrote that was loosely based on um, actually my husband's experience as, as a an, an artist um, with a mainstream with with a mainstream uh, label. Yeah, label, exactly. So it's the ups and downs. It's the the high and the crash, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the story behind that. And so I really would like to do that one, but. Um, that's going to take some GoFundMe. So look out for it. <laughs> that take some major GoFundMe. <laughs> uh, as we're starting to wrap up, uh, let's see. Advice to, uh, aside from the advice you've given everybody already tonight, uh, advice to anyone who's uh, just starting out, who's like completely green, uh, what would your advice be to them? Um, definitely surround yourself by like-minded people. Mm -hmm. But even more than that, surround yourself by people who are two notches above you. And what I mean by that is surround yourself by people that you feel like you can learn something from. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's regardless of whether you went to film school or not. Um, you should never stop being a student. So if you're always in learning mode, you should always be around, surround, trying to surround yourself by people that you can learn from. So mm -hmm. even in, in my situation now with um, Maurice, you know, even though we see, see ourselves, and that's just one example, but even though we see ourselves as equals and, you know, we're in this together and all that, I feel like that Maurice has been doing this a bit longer and he, and he has a, a, a bit more projects under his belt. Mm -hmm. And so working with people like him allows me to kind of soak it in and and learn um as as i go along yeah um, at the same time i have to be you have it, no matter where you are whether how green you are whatever you probably it, the chances of you knowing absolutely zero i don't really believe that i believe right. everybody has something to teach so while you're busy learning there's people that can that are that are that are you know on that step below you that could be learning from you as well so as long as you're keeping your network up and going um, I think that for me is the, is, is key. Um, and then I just go back to saying, like I did before, don't, don't allow yourself to judge yourself based on other people's accomplishments, other people's projects, yeah, whatever. That looking Under left and right. Don't do it. Exactly. Don't yeah. do it. Understand that your journey is going to be different and you just have to, you have to own that. Mm -hmm. I see we have another. <laughs> What? Another question. I'm not gonna say <laughs> who's from, but the question is, when did you fall in love with hip hop? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> when did I fall in love with hip hop? Oh my gosh! Uh, well, let's see. I guess that would have had to be uh, 1996 <laughs> on Howard's campus. <laughs> <laughs> when a when a young hip hop artist tried to recruit me for his uh to come to one of his parties. 
Oh my goodness. That would probably be when I fell in love with hip hop. <laughs> oh man, that was too funny. Um, advice to anyone who's seasoned in the game. So we got the question from, from, you know, for the, uh, the newbies advice for the newbies, um, anyone who's seasoned in the game, who's been doing it for years in Hollywood or New York or any of these other places, what, what, if you could have a conversation with them to say, you know, this is what I would like to see more of you guys doing for the um, indie film scene, what, what would that be? I would say just as, as, as much as you can make yourself available to, you know, to, and, and reach back and just, and, and each one teach one kind of thing. Um, our community as artists could grow exponentially if we, if the, the people who were above mm -hmm. were able to, to look back and kind of pull people in. So, um, I mean, other than that, I don't have much advice for, for, someone on that level because I, I don't I'm not on that level yet. right <laughs> so but I would like to be and I would love a you know a, a mentor to yeah. you know to, to to take me there but um and I understand that, that and, and I understand that for them that you kind of have to weed out the people who are serious and the, uh. the ones who aren't and so I know that that's a, a factor as well but um there's a there's a lot of us out here that are are serious and yes and determined and mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, okay any yeah. last words uh, anything else you want to talk about did i miss anything on my my notepad here i know we're gonna before we close out we're definitely gonna get into how everyone can find you okay. and, and what you're doing but uh, anything well, for else? anyone who is interested and hasn't actually seen um two of my shorts anyway they are on Vimeo, and I believe the the link is. Where is the link? Ah, uh, the link is is yes, it's on the um, what is that? Whatever that lead page is um, to sign up for this right to register. Uh, chat. Mm -hmm. um, you can also get to it by going to our um, main company website, which is um, left ent.com ll that's left with two l l l e f t e n t dot com on the home page at the top um there's a banner um and if you click on that it'll take you to it um so if you're interested you can check them out we got them we have them out there uh, just for for free there's no cost or anything and um i don't know spread the word we always that's the biggest thing indie people can ask for is for you right. to spread the word that's right so on Facebook, you guys are, let's see, let's get some social media going. Facebook, it's Left Entertainment as well. On Facebook is um, forward slash Left Entertainment. Um, we also have a, a forward slash uh, Nelson Publishing Books. Uh, actually, it's just Nelson Publishing on Facebook. Um, but if you go to leftent.com, everything is listed there. The Twitter pages, the IG pages, Facebook, like everything is accessible from, from the, the main website. So I would say start there and, uh, mm -hmm. and give her some feedback. Yeah. Definitely give them some feedback. Once you've watched the movies, uh, give some, some feedback and some shout outs on social media. Anything else? I think that's, I think, uh, yeah, I think we covered it all. <laughs> and, I told you, and I told you, I said, I don't have an hour's worth of stuff to say. <laughs> we have sat down plenty of times and that's like, I know we have an hour or more to talk about. <laughs> the problem is going to be uh, trying to shut it down yeah. <laughs> at an hour. Well, thank you so much, my girl, Neek. Thank you so much. We will be uh, sitting down again, I'm sure, soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, we can raise we can raise shoe something. Yes. We got to get to work. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh thank you to everyone that joined us live tonight. Um a lot of questions, a lot of good questions uh coming in tonight. Uh, I will be posting uh, the video to, uh, well, the link to the video on Facebook tomorrow on uh, Real 365 on uh, Facebook, R-E-E-L 365. Uh that's also um 
going to be a link to my YouTube page that has uh, all the previous chats. Uh, thank you guys for coming up and uh, we will see you next week. Uh, I think next week I'm sitting down with Drake, with Drika. Nice. I know. That's going to be nice because she's, uh, she's in the game full time. Yes. Yes. So honey. yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's next Thursday. We'll be sitting down with her and then, yeah, we got to get Stefan uh, coming uh, to sit down soon. Yeah. Um, but thank you again for sitting You're down welcome. with me. Oh, well um, everybody have a, a good night or day or whatever it is when you uh, are watching. Thank you. Thanks.